Suzanne. I'll be with you in a moment. The Gale Storm Show is presented by New Nescafe. Uh, so let's have another cup of coffee. Yes, let's have a cup of Nescafe. finally got through to the front office. Listen to this. Before the ship is one day out, you'll meet three men without a doubt. What do you think of that? I think it's pretty bad poetry. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> three men. One for you and one for me. And, and one. one warming the bench. Oh, honestly, <laughs> Nuji, you don't believe this nonsense, do you? Of course not. <laughs> I wonder how we'll recognize them. Well, that's no problem. I'll just check with the front office again. Listen to this, Susanna. Here's the clue to recognition. Each one has whiskers on his chin. One and two, accept them readily, but watch the third. You'll find he's deadly. Nugent. You're making that up. Honest, Susanna, I took it down just as you spelled it out. You're chairman of the board. Well, it's ridiculous. It'd be hard to find a five o'clock shadow on this ship, much less three men with beards. I beg your pardon. Could you direct me to the purser's office? Well, certainly. It's, it's on C deck in the forward section. Right opposite the grand stairway. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks awfully. Oh, not at all. Uh, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> Those eyes. Those shoulders. That cute little beard. <laughs> oh, Susanna, he had a... Well, I couldn't exactly call that five o'clock shadow. Let's get another look at number one. Come on. He's gone. He must have gone that away. Nuji, you take the promenade. I'll cut through the dining room, and we'll head him off at the swimming pool. Well, howdy, partners. Oh, well, howdy. <laughs> Fancy running into you again. It's a small ship, isn't it? You know, for a while I had the idea you charming ladies were trading me. Oh, no. No, we just happened to be tiptoeing by. <laughs> and we didn't want you to forget those directions. Oh, yes, yes, that's it. They were pretty complicated. The purser's office is on C deck in the forward section, right opposite the grand staircase. I can't miss it. Uh, you see, I told you he wouldn't forget. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm Susanna Pomeroy, the ship's social director. How do you do, Miss Pomeroy? I'm Vance Carter. And I'm Elvira Nugent, a uh, ship's manicure, is first class. So. Well, you I'm sure. Well, I hope to see a great deal of both of you. Cheerio. Uh... And so, Captain Huxley, as president of the Anglo-American Globetrotters Association, it is my pleasure to present to you this bust of a great sailor and patriot to commemorate the pleasure-filled years that the Ocean Queen has sailed the ocean that touches our mutual shores. Here, here. Well, sir, I will only accept this bust on one condition. Condition? Yes, that you will say a few appropriate words at the unveiling tonight. Of course, Captain. I'll be delighted. Yes. Uh, thank you. Do you think that 10 o'clock is a good hour for the ceremony, sir? Oh, well, splendid, Captain. I'll be there, yes. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, yes. Cedric, what was the reason for that emotional outburst? Sorry, sir. It was the sight of Admiral Nelson. I was carried away. Admiral Nelson? 
For your information, Cedric, that is a bust of Captain John Paul Jones. Really, sir? Him that was a thorn in the side of the British? Yes. Speaking of thorns in the side, tell Miss Pomeroy I want to see her right away. Yes, sir. Now, do you believe the Ouija board? And just think, there's two more like him coming up. <laughs> Sorry, Nugie, but I just can't take that Ouija board too seriously. How can you doubt it? Didn't Mr. Carter show up? <laughs> he was just a coincidence. I'll believe it when I see the other two beards and not before. Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over the ship for you two. The captain wants to see you, and cabin A-10 wants a manicure. I'm on my way. Cedric, how long will it take you to grow a beard? Grow a beard? Hide this strong, fearless chin? Oh, never mind, Cedric. <laughs> uh, Nugie's just trying to keep a Ouija board honest. <laughs> Come in. I'm Miss Nugent. Uh, did you call for a manicure? I did. Please come in quietly. My, if you call me none too soon, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Miss Nugent, the manicure is for Mr. Replogel, and he detests noise of any sort, unnecessary conversation and small talk. Has he got the wrong manicurist? <laughs> How do you want your nails cut, sir? As quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Bearded bomber on the run. Scotland Yard announced today that they know the identity of the bearded individual who has been seen placing time bombs on public monuments in London parks because he doesn't like pigeons. His arrest is confidentially expected within 24 hours. <gasps> Wouldn't you know he'd be a man with a beard? There's something sneaky about anyone who wears one. As though they were trying to hide something. <laughs> Cut my throat. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Not there. I believe <laughs> this would be a good place. Right over here. That's it. No, 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 no. Hold it. I'm sorry. Here. Here, right in the middle. Right there in the middle. No, no. No, not there. Not there. Oh, <laughs> I guess who I just... What's that? It's a locket my granny gave me. I never go anywhere without it. Uh, Susanna, remember that call I got for a manicure? Uh-huh. Uh, Cedric, why don't you set that thing down? It makes me nervous. Call me when and if you make up your mind. Which I doubt. Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 Wait a minute, you go ahead. Wait, help me here. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Oh, what were you going to tell me, Nugie? Susanna, I just met Beard number two. No. I even gave him a manicure. Was he another doll like that Vance Carter? Well, not exactly. I think he's the one the Ouija board warned us to watch out for. You know, the deadly one. Here, here, read this. Hmm? Bearded bomber on the run. Scotland Yard announced today that they know the identity of the bearded individual who has been seen placing time bombs on public monuments in London parks because he doesn't like pigeons. Now, wait a minute. Are you saying that this bomber is aboard the Ocean Queen just because he has a beard? He's on the lamb, isn't he? Remember what the Ouija board said. <gasps> Nugie, now you just sit down and relax. There. Now, be smart. Forget all about bombs and beards. Don't even... <laughs> what 
was that? It sounded like a bomb. No, I mean, a sneeze. I never heard a basket of fruit go tick tock, tick tock before either. It's a bomb. Call somebody. Call anybody. Now, there you go again, jumping to conclusions. You want me to show you how wrong you are? Now, what's in this basket of fruit? Hmm? Let's see. A large grapefruit. Mm, three apples. Two oranges. And two bananas. Two more oranges. And a what? lovely bunch of grapes. Yes. And... A bomb. Last one to the captain's scrambled eggs. Me? <laughs> I lifted up the bunch of grapes, and there was the bomb. It was going tick-tock, tick-tock, Oh, tick -tock. quiet, Miss Nugent. Have Cedric meet me in the lounge, on the double. It was going tick-tock, tick-tock. Will, will you please be quiet? There's no time to lose your head. Now pull yourself together and follow me. Oh, go on, Cedric. Uncover the bomb. You don't want us to think you're a coward, do you? Oh, I am, sir. There's no question about it. Cedric, back to the basket. Uh, well. A nice, leather-bound bomb. <laughs> oh, but, Captain, I, I tell you I saw it. It, it, it was a bomb, a real Miss one. Miss Pomeroy, I will deal with you later. Mm. And as for you, Miss Nugent, Miss Nugent. Bang! Thank God. No, Jim. I know we saw a bomb, a real bomb, like that checker player had in Amsterdam. I can still hear that tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. No, Jim, please. for the Ouija board. Where is the bomb hidden now, and when does it go off? I can't wait to see Captain Huxley's face when he reads that. Come on, Nugie. Oh. Oh, this is the devil, isn't it? The key, I mean. Uh, uh, cheerio. Pomeroy, if this is another one of your hallucinations. Very well, sir. I'm sorry to have taken up your valuable time. After all, what's a bomb or two aboard a big ship like this? Well, wait a minute now. If I'm wrong about the bomb, I will apologize profusely. Let me see the note. Well, I... Susan, Susanna, I, I want to see you alone. Uh, uh, later, Nugie. Show Captain Huxley the note. Uh, the, the, the note? Uh, what, what note? 
Oh, uh, Nuji, don't keep the captain waiting. Show him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> blow overboard. I see it. No note. It just happened to blow overboard. First, it was a bomb you discovered. Only that turned out to be a traveling clock. Now, you listen to me, both of you. Do you realize the panic you could have caused by this bomb nonsense? Now, I warn you, I don't want to hear another word about a bomb. You won't, sir. I promise you, sir. <laughs> All right. Just tell us where the bomb is. Mr. Carter has informed me that he is a member of Scotland Yard. Oh, really? On business or pleasure, Mr. Carter? Well, originally business. But it's developed into a pleasure trip, I'm happy to report. I dare say you've read about the bearded bomber. I say, don't tell me he's aboard. No, I've checked thoroughly, and I assure you he's not on board. Matter of fact, the Yard knows a good deal more than we've let under the papers. We know the bomber's name is Eustace Dibble, and that he's a thin little man with a gray, scraggly beard. Give us a clue. Oh! <laughs> For the last time! Susanna, look! Discouraged. Discouraged? Don't give up the ship. You still have until 10 o'clock to find the bomb. 10 o'clock sharp. The bomb is. <laughs> now I know where the bomber is, where that sneeze came from. <laughs> it's him, all right. I can even hear the bomb going tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Do you believe the Ouija board? That was the third beard. The name is Dibble, ladies. Eustace Dibble at your service. I'd love to stay and chat with you, but I'm afraid my schedule won't permit it. I think he's gone. How can you tell? This room is soundproof. I've allowed a leisurely eight minutes to stroll up to the deck. Two minutes to get into a lifeboat. Five minutes to lower it. And what is more important, five minutes to get out of range when my bomb goes off. Oh. We're locked in. Oh. Help! Somebody! Cheerio, ladies. If there's anything you want, just scream. <laughs> no one can possibly hear us. Oh, we might as well relax. Somebody will find us eventually. Oh, I doubt it. Remember that phrase in the note? Don't give up the ship. Uh, what about us? Now I know where the bomb is. It's in the bust. The, the bust of Captain John Paul Jones? Just outside the door? Oh, huh? Hell! Hell! Well, what time is it? Oh, no, no, don't answer me. Will you stop worrying about the time and do something? Why did I ever run away to sea? Hey, an emergency button. And this is certainly an emergency. Let's hmm. face it, no stop. <laughs> well, this is it. We're trapped. We're trapped. It is my great honor to present this bust of the immortal sailor, John Paul Jones, to another sailor who is with us tonight. Yes, we feel honored to honor this man because it is an honor to be a guest, as his guest, rather, on board this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
As I was saying before I was interrupted, it is my great honor to present this bust of the immortal sailor, John Paul Jones, to another sailor with whom many of us have sailed the seven seas. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, <clears throat> well, we feel honored to honor this man because it has been an honor for us to be his guest on this luxurious luxury liner. <laughs> well, when he stands on the bridge, we know we're in good <laughs> when he smiled <laughs> at us from his captain's table, we know he's glad to have us aboard. Yes, the name of Simon Huxley has become synonymous with quiet, uneventful voyages around the yes, world. Yes, <laughs> Voyages full of pleasant memories. Oh, very pleasant indeed. You found a spot for that blooming bust yet? I've got just the place for it. What? Miss Pomeroy, you be careful or you, you break that. Ah. Oh. Ah, take cover! Great balls of fire. What was that? What was that? Oh, Captain Huxley must have exploded. I mean, Captain John Paul Jones. Do <laughs> you remember that bomb I was telling you about, sir? Good heavens, that was a bomb. That means Dibble is aboard. Help! Help! Correction, Dibble's overboard. Ran all aboard! Ran Look alive there. All right, sir. Lower life off 42. Mm. Shall we go see how I foiled the bearded bomber? Brother, yes. Oh, yes. Miss Pomeroy, how would you like to spend the next four evenings telling me just how you figured out Dibble was aboard? You just twisted my arm. No oh, romance. <laughs> Is romance all you think of, Miss Pomeroy? Well, no, sir, but certain men seem to remind me that I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just put two and two together, Mr. Rutolfo, and caught my man. <laughs> my, that was a beautiful speech. Just beautiful. What are you doing for the next four evenings? Well, dancing with you, my dear. <laughs> oh, there's something about a man with a beard. Oh, you ought to start raising one tomorrow, sir. <laughs> I wouldn't wait until tomorrow, sir. I'd start right now. <laughs> never. 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 Never!